Hey guys, Paul Aiken here from DroneU to answer the question, what is the best drone for mapping? I have to say, before I say anything else, I really had high hopes for the Solo R10C. It has a much larger camera sensor. It actually uses the UMC R10C, which is the exact same APS-C sensor that you would find on an Alpha 6300, Alpha 6500, or an A6000 from any of the Sony line of cameras. Now, if you're familiar with the Phantom 4 Pro, it actually uses a one inch sensor instead of an APS-C sensor. But here's the thing, when you're mapping, the size of the sensor is not that important. What's important is the size of the image that comes out of the sensor. And what I found really interesting is that the images coming out of the R10C are the exact same size as the images out of the Phantom 4 Pro. Now our mapping generators are reading each individual pixel. So when the images are the exact same size, you really get no benefit to using the UMC R10C camera, which is kind of disappointing. And I'm sure some of you photographers are out there saying, wait, are we getting better light and aren't we getting more information per pixel? Yes, but our mapping generators are using information pixel by pixel and it's just simply the information inside the pixel. The light doesn't really matter as much, nor does the amount of dynamic range. So you're also probably wondering, what's the best drone for mapping as far as batteries go? So let's talk for a second about batteries. I love the Phantom 4 Pro because we have two batteries available, the extended life battery and the regular battery. With the 3DR Solo R10C, we only have one 5200 milliamp 14.8 volt 4S battery that's available. And the thing is, this camera is very, very heavy on this drone. In fact, I'm actually kind of surprised it can lift it, which causes a few problems. Number one, the GPS accuracy in the Solo is significantly less than the GPS accuracy of a Phantom 4 Pro. So you're not gonna get the most accurate data in mapping. But issue number two is, since the camera is so heavy, the drone really has a hard time keeping the camera level on the gimbal. Well, why is that important? Well, if we don't have level images in our data, we're gonna have an offset of our imagery and on the horizon. Why is that important? Well, we're not gonna get equilateral overlay of our images for our mapping software to see. So when we don't have a level horizon, we have different overlay, thus we don't get accurate information. Now guys, I'm giving you this information after testing every mapping solution on the planet for the last three or four months, and it's really come down to this. And I'm sure some of you are even asking, why are we, why are we using these small, tiny drones for mapping when we're trying to get the most accurate data? Because you need an integrated solution, because most mapping softwares need an integrated solution to gather GPS information, fire the shutter, and autofocus. On the Inspire 2 X5S, you have autofocus issues. Using an M600 of A7R Mark II or another larger sensor, you're not getting an auto shutter and an autofocus again, so you're not having an integrated system. So that literally leaves us with these two drones. So, with picture size being the same, with battery capacity being better with the Phantom 4 Pro, GPS accuracy being better, and with the gimbal always being level and on point, the better drone for mapping is the Phantom 4 Pro. So if you're looking at SightScan though for processing data and you're mapping large scale jobs and you need some sort of engine that can handle a volume of jobs, SightScan could be a great answer for you because it is an end-to-end -end solution, which essentially means that when you upload photos, it processes your photos about 200 per hour into a generator, which it does use Pix4D. The issue is if you're mapping really large jobs, you may have a problem using SightScan because when you merge projects, you're not actually able to use manual tie points. And manual tie points are absolutely critical and important when doing mapping projects and merging those projects so they snap together. Without manual tie points, you'll find that you get multiple elevations on your models and maps, and it makes you look stupid to the client. So now 3DR does give you a customer service representative to do those manual tie points for you, but if they're not done correctly, you're gonna have issues with getting maps that suck over and over and over again. Now here's the thing, guys. 
With SiteScan, if you're processing a lot of small jobs, it's probably the very best cloud processing software out there for doing that. It's really good, you can send information to your clients, and it provides a great source for your clients to view data. The only issue is, it's gonna be difficult to view point cloud data itself. So if you're creating point clouds for people to interpret that data, then I would recommend you output or export that data and send them directly to your clients to be viewed in Cloud Compare for Apple and to be viewed in Autodesk Recap for Windows users. And I actually like Autodesk Recap more, it's a little bit more accurate. So guys, the answer to the question, what is the best drone for mapping? It is the Phantom 4 Pro. Now, if you wanna learn the competitive advantage in mapping and learn what we've learned over the course of the last months, if not years, on mapping, you've gotta check out the Drone U and take the course because you're gonna learn systematically all the different applications and the benefits of each application. Why is that important? The acquisition of data and mapping is going to be key to your accuracy in your maps overall. Without the right acquisition plan, you're never gonna get very accurate data. So if you want more accurate data and you want to learn from the source, The Drone School, the best online training community, check out thedroneu.com and learn more about how you can map. Well, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. My name is Paul and you're watching DroneU TV.